Like, people think so much has just been given to me, and it's crazy. They don't see all the long nights that I took sleeping on the floor of the gym. You know, people think I'm so, like, naturally gifted and all this. Like, no, I've been, man, I've been busting my ass for many, many years. You can lie to everybody. You can lie to yourself for a long time. But once you get in that cage, that's one of the beauties about fighting. Like, you can't lie. If you really ain't about it, the ain't gonna come out. When Joe Silver or Sean Shelby give him that call and he and he say, Kevin Lee, and they look at it and they say, oh, I think I could beat that guy. Oh, you think so? Yeah, All right, well then, right there. Yeah, that's disrespect. I'm taking that as personal as they come. Yeah. I'm gonna f you up. Kevin Lee is under the chin. It's not completely over yet, but it is under the chin. Now he's gonna switch the lock, and that's where it's it. No, no, no. And there it is! Yeah. Kevin Lee will be your winner by rear naked choke. You know, I think we were a little disappointed we didn't get to see all five rounds, Kevin. The one thing my question was, was when he had you in that 100%, when he DDT'd you, how did that make you feel? What was going on in your head when, as soon as you guys slammed on the mat? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't even know what a DDT is. I think that's a WWE move. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the one that lifted him in the air, so I don't see how he's slamming me if I got him on my shoulder, you know? Let, let's, let's throw on another uh, a real journalist. I, I don't even know if he really watched the fight. You're an I athlete. Suggest, you're I an suggest athlete. you study the fight. You have decent fight. hands, but compared to myself and compared to a lot of these higher level fighters, <laughs> this is the one fighter that you had. Yeah, Michael Chiesa. Again, I was supposed to again, fight Michael I'll... Chiesa. And the one thing is, is I will eat you up for lunch, but that's not the case because you don't meet my standards on this. You have to put in your time, kid. You we can do it. Name. It'd be easy money. Oh, easy money for sure. sure. Yeah. This was the fight to make. Me and Tony were bound to fight, whether it was gonna be a headline in the T-Mobile Arena for a world championship, or if it was gonna be in my backyard. You know you're not gonna be able to talk when you get inside that octagon. Yeah, you know you gonna know who I am, <laughs> Look, Tony, I'm gonna you up. You're All gonna right. feel it. Yeah. October oh, yeah. 7. Oh, yeah? I don't think Kevin Lee understands what he's getting in the octagon with. I'm an animal, man. If I want this guy to feel all the punishment that I want him to really feel, I'll take him the full five rounds. But I wanna be, Nice about it, I'll finish him in the first. Kevin Lee, have a good fight with you. Make weight, show up. Be ready to battle. It is about as good a fight as we could possibly put together. The wait for it ends here. Tony Ferguson is the toughest fight in this division, hands down. Tony does so many unconventional things, so many weird things. It's so hard to prepare for the man. He's got great cardio, he's got that Mexican heart, and he's got undeniable will. I see Kevin being at the right place at the right time. He's game, he's got skills, and he's got decent condition. He's gonna present a fight, and it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Why, and I love challenges. I love challenges because I like to pick them apart, put them to a test, dust them off when I'm all done with them and then send them back home. He's got a wicked, wicked darts choke. Oh, he's got time. it! He's Tony got it! Ferguson! Nobody in this division wants to fight Tony Ferguson. That's what gets me up about this fight. I love somebody that nobody's figured out, and I love to be the one to go out there, put him down, and show the people that I'm really here, and I'm the next generation. This is brutal. Matthews better move here, and there's the stoppage. How about the Motown Dino? This is for the real UFC lightweight championship. McGregor's got the paper champ, but the man's only got one fight in the division. Me and Tony Ferguson both have double-digit fights in this division, the toughest division, hands down, in the UFC. And uh, October 7th will determine the real champion. These guys have interesting styles and exciting styles, so this fight has the makings to be fight of the night for sure. I'm bringing out all the tools for my toolbox in this fight. Now, with Kevin Lee, I told everybody that I was going to bring out my blades. Oh, big elbow there from Ferguson! I'm going to test your conditioning, I'm going to test your heart, and for sure, I'm going to test that durability on that chin. Oh, oh my God! Once he gets in there and he feels my style, he going to know he way in over his head, and it's going to take a lot more than a hard head and some toughness to get him through this one. Lee's got that sunk now. There's the tap! Kevin Lee! I'm going to go in there and rumble this dude up so much, he wants to quit. That his corner wants to throw in that towel, and that's it. My time! Team El Kukui, baby, is coming after you harder than a fucking right hook, Kevin Lee. Oh, my goodness! And you're not going anywhere, besides maybe on a gurney. I'm going to Tony up. Oh, man. He think it's going to be easy. This ain't going to be easy. This is going to be the hardest fight of his life. He loves a dog fight, but I'm going to bring the dog up out of him. Hopefully, it's a five round, and I beat the out of him. He hurt him! Oh, my God! Tony, you know you done up. El Cuckoo going night night. October 7th is El Dio de los Muertos. I'm telling you. Kevin Lee, you got problems, buddy. His name is El Cuckoo. I'll see you October 7th. I hope you got your together.
Make sure you bring your gloves and your mouthpiece. It's gonna be a f***ing war. And now, the UFC flyweight champion of the world, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson! I'm the only fighter to ever hold this belt. I got it by hard work and beating other people in my division. That's the best fighter on the planet Earth right there. I I've done it all. I've knocked somebody out. Oh! Unbelievable! I've submitted black belts in the UFC. There's the tap! Demetrius Johnson submits Wilson Hayes! I TKO people. It's to the body! That's it! That's it! They're all great accomplishments, but if I am able to go out there and win this fight, I'll be the longest reigning UFC champion ever in history. Ten title defenses, six of them stoppage wins. He moves alongside Anderson Silva. He's not going to endure the history of being the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. This is definitely uncharted territories for any champion out there, and I'm glad I'd be the first person to, to make that walk, and hopefully I'm successful. Guys lose motivation. They lose their hunger when they're on top. Not this man. He strives for perfection. Everybody's watching and dissecting you to see if they can beat you. So I've always got to make sure I'm changing the way I fight. I've always got to go out there and put on a better performance. It's not about the fight, it's about what's after the fight. It's about becoming the perfect mixed martial artist. As a mixed martial artist, even though you're at the very top, you can always improve in yourself. Make yourself a better version of yourself when you fight. I'm telling you, that kid is the best. This has been a long journey, and it's not going to come to end. GSP and Anderson, Simmons, they're great champions, but I'm the best champion to ever step in this octagon. There's not another champion out here who can mix it up, wrestle, strike. I'm out here whooping and cleaning it up. But next time we step in octagon, we break it! We break it! We break it! DJ's trying to reach that 11th title defense, and he came to me for it, which was a bad, bad decision. I'm not in there to be his stepping stone. I'm not in there to be his 11th trophy win. Tell you what, though, history will be broken, but not for DJ. You know, history's gonna be broken for me. It's gonna be the second ever UFC flyweight champion. This is a hungry, hard-working, nasty guy when he gets in that octagon. Ray Borg, one of the best back takers in any division in the sport right now. This kid is legit. Ready, and go! I started this journey to be the best in the world when I was 13. When the flyweight division was introduced to the UFC and DJ fought for that little four-man tournament, I believe I was only 17 at the time. And that's when I knew DJ's a guy I need to beat. Every fight he had, I was more and more determined to beat him. Very aggressive and dangerous from all different positions. He could pose some problems for the champ. I am bringing everything I got into that fight, and it is going to be a miserable night for him. Oh, big elbows, Ray Borg doing damage. There's Borg quick on a takedown, hit a beautiful double leg. I'm not going in there to do well against DJ. I'm going in there to beat DJ. Demetrius Johnson, I'm coming for that belt, and there's nothing that's gonna stop me. He's in there trying to kill me. I'm in there trying to kill him. It's literally kill or be killed in there. Who's gonna do it first? Moving into mount, now taking the back. This is not where you want to be against Borg. Oh, he's oh got there's it. the tap. To the outside world, I'm just gonna be another little piece of cheese, you know, to feed to the mouse. But I know in my heart that I am going to beat DJ, and I am the man to do it. I am the best pound round fighter in the world, and I'll continue to keep on pulling it. I'm not backing up. It's on. Let's go. Since our ninth, you're gonna see. The only UFC flyweight champion in the world, Demetrius Johnson, got and cement his legacy as the longest reigning UFC champion in the world. Demetrius Johnson, one title defense away from UFC immortality. I want this belt more than he wants that 11th win, and I can promise you that.